Hey guys, Scott Poley here. I'm a session guitarist, pedal steel player. I also produce and write music. And today we're here with my good friend, Jesse Egan. We're gonna talk all about his basses and bass rig and pedals and amps and all that good stuff. There is another full video about basses that Jesse and I have done that will probably be released by the time that this is out. So I urge you to go and check that out. But thanks so much for doing this, Jesse. It's great. Thanks for having me. We all love talking about gear and guitars, don't we, and stuff we like that. <laughs> and this is a fairly new acquisition for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. This is uh, one of my, my recent purchases. It's a, it's a Fender Elite Jazz Bass 5-string, active. Um, a jazz bass on steroids, I would say. Yeah, maxed, maxed out, maxed <laughs> exactly, out for yeah. sure. So you've got round wounds on this maple fingerboard with these really cool inlays as well that are kind of like a black tortoiseshell thing, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, it's in the detail, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's what I like about these high-end yeah. high bases is they, they put a level of thought into, into every detail. We're also a minute into the video and talking about inlays, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear how this sounds. Well, so stock pickups on this as well, aren't they? Yeah, it's stock pickups. Uh, it's the Fender Noiseless pickups. These are Elixir strings um, with the, the NanoWeb coding, which I really, really love been playing them for years. Yeah, everything is stock on this bass. It just it came out the factory right, so I didn't see much point in changing. Yeah, much absolutely. It. And how are we hearing these basses as well, Jesse? What are we going through as as stock? What are we what are we hearing right now? So as standard, what's usually on all the time is the Keeley basis limiting amplifier, which is a it's a really, really nice sounding compressor, VCA, kind of like a almost like a DBX 160 style compressor. Yeah. Um, really nice on on the front end, just gives it a little bit of a bit of body, a bit of oomph, kind of like fattens the low end a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we've got the Laney Digbeth preamp, which is a fairly new thing that they've they've come out with, which is really great. I've got the, I mean, it does a bunch of stuff. Uh, obviously, like as a standalone preamp, it's great yeah, yeah. as well. At the minute, I'm using it uh, with the FET circuitry engaged all the time and as an additional drive. Um, and then goes through the rest of my board, which isn't on at the minute, and then uh, hits the sans amp at the end, which gives it a little bit of amp simulation. Yeah. Um, just kind of, I blend it about 50-50. Yeah. So that it sounds like there's a bit of amp coming in, a bit of dry signal. So that's kind of, you know, beginning of the session, that's your, your tone that we're hearing, isn't it? Kind yeah, of if I'm recording, I'll actually split the signal. Um, so I'm sending it as a DI signal and, and then you've got your amp thing. Yeah, yeah, so I might take the parallel out of the sans amp if I'm using the sans amp, or I, I will actually use an actual amp uh, like this this Laney here, which I've got rigged up in my studio. Um, it depends on the song, really. Like, so I, I don't really have like a go to. This is where I start. I, I kind of treat each song differently. Okay. Um, the principle is is the same, but yeah. in terms of actually dialing in the tone, I don't really work with presets because I like dialing it in from zero because I think it, it fits the song. Yeah, and you're doing so many tone. different songs in so many different styles, and that's really the only way to do it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I think as a guideline, I'll, I'll normally try and send the clients a DI signal and an amp signal um, phase aligned already, so they don't have to faff with that. Um, but I'll either use uh, my Laney, you know, if it's rigged up and mic'd up, uh, if it's the right sound. Sometimes I'll use um, the Sans amp uh, as a separate amp signal. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll use uh, some uh, DAW based stuff um, like the the dark glass, which which yeah. I think we're using today as well. And um, yeah, just, just yeah. Each, each song to itself. Really. Okay, cool. Well, let's hear a little bit of this bass, Jesse. Let's yeah. let's hear some of the sounds. Very, very modern sounding. Um, we've got the active circuitry dialed in, so quite uh, quite loud, you know, quite zingy, great for slap stuff. Yeah, very, very good for R&B, pop, gospel stuff. Uh, Obviously, five string as well, so yeah, extended range. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is a 
70s P bass that we're going to switch to, isn't it, Jesse? Yeah, this is a 1973 American P bass, um, strung with flat wound strings. So it's um, very, very kind of classic Motown y sound, very warm, very fuzzy, quite mellow. Very reminiscent of Motown, yeah. James Jamerson type sound. And that's exactly the same signal flow, isn't it, that we've just heard from the two basses? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same signal yeah. flow. What a difference in sound. Just a hundred percent, yeah. It's a little bit quieter, obviously, with the active circuitry giving it some some extra volume. So maybe just mash that up a little bit there with it, the Keeley. Um, but yeah, this is great for that kind of like Pino Palladino. Kind of sound. Yeah, sounds really, enormous. Brilliant. Yeah, sits really well in the mix. Um, this this is what the producers usually reach for first. Yeah, absolutely. And they, are these are old flat wounds, presumably, are they? Yeah, these are Labella flat wounds, which is uh, I think it's the same gauge as what James Jamerson used. I basically got this because of James yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, what can I do to make it sound exactly like it? Um, so yeah, it's Labella flat wound strings. They've been on this bass since I bought it, so four or five years yeah. now. Um, and now that they've settled in, it just, it just, it's that sound. Yeah. yeah. It sounds really, really nice. Sometimes I'll use it with um, these foam mutes as well, which I pop under the strings there and uh, just gives it that, that ever so slightly muted, less sustain. Yeah, for sure. Up to it. Well, should we talk about pedals? Let's. So let's have a little look through the pedal board. So we've got the Keeley bassist, is that that's first in your chain? I've got the Keeley uh, basis doing kind of slight, it's like 2.5 ratio compression, which is fairly light compression. Yeah. It doesn't always hit, but when I dig in, it does. But just having it engaged uh, gives it a really nice signal in the way in which I, I really love. It's it's that's, that's that bit of gear for me where like, if I don't have it, I feel like something's missing, if that yeah. makes sense. So it's, it's just a bit of, a bit of limiting on the top end, a bit more support for when you play yeah. them quiet. Right? Yeah, exactly. And it's very, very transparent. Like there's no, it's not too complicated with the control, so there's no like attack ratio release and any of that on the pedal. It's, I think the guys at Keeley have really got it right when they, when it comes to playing bass, and they've gone, okay, well this is we're gonna set it to that, and then we can just play around with how much compression is actually happening. Um, I personally, I, I think it's I think it's great. That's great. It's yeah, it sounds incredible. And what's next up on your pedal board? So next, I've got Boss OC2 octave pedal, which is, I think this one's from the 1980s. It does two octaves, it does a sub octave, and it does one octave lower than what you're playing. I always have it set to, I've got the, just the one octave happening. So okay. it's one octave lower than. So kind of quite reminiscent of the that 80s kind of Paul Young sound um, yeah all the tony levin thing with yeah, the, yeah or that uh the thing about this pedal as well is if you turn off the 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 normal pitch that's coming through you kind of get like a little bit of a synthy synthy bass sound going on which i really like So I lot. didn't know they did that. That's awesome. Oh, I it's, like it's that. incredible. That's what a lot of people use them for. It's it's almost like making it into a synth. So I'm jumping out of the gun here a little bit, but if I pair it with like uh, uh, an overdrive and a filter, for example. So that is essentially a yeah. synth, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. No need for Taurus pedals here. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, super clean clean octave as well and it's um yeah this is great yeah great sound what's up next jesse this is a kind of classic bass players pedal the uh the microtubes it really is yeah i, I was on the lookout for an overdrive for a long time and I, oh, they all sounded a bit you know like one was too zingy and one, but then i heard that and i was like that is the overdrive i think I the thing with the microtubes from what i understand is that they also preserve it's, it's dark glass isn't it it is dark glass but they pre preserve the low the low frequencies of the bass, like if yes. you put like a boss yeah. overdrive pedal, a guitar overdrive, 
it really scoops out yeah. all of those nice yeah. frequencies that you need as a bass player. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas this just does kind of that it, nice big full it, drive sound in a box. Hundred right? percent, and it, it's got a blend knob as well, which I love, and to me is essential when it comes to anything that alters the sound as much as overdrives do and things like that, because sometimes you don't want to commit your entire tone to totally that. Totally agree. Um, so yeah, this this one I use for just to add a bit of grit, you know, like when if a big chorus comes along or if we need to just give the song a bit more drive, so try it dry and then. So you can you can still hear a lot of that the, ba the yeah, normal yeah. dry bass signal coming through, but you obviously got the affected signal too. On its own, it sounds like it's a bit much, but in the mix, it kind of just sits. Yeah, gives it that extra little bit of grit that it needs, um, and obviously it does. You know, you can go from very kind of like old sounding drive '60s '70s vibes to very new sounding with this, this era knob here, which is um, it's the the tone of the actual drive. That's itself. so cool. Yep. What a great pedal! And what's up next, Jesse? Up next, we've got the the Laney Digbeth bass preamp, which is within itself a standalone preamp. It's got an EQ, it's got uh, FET and tube circuits into it, it's got a bunch of different options you can use for the notches that the EQ uses. Uh, all your standard, you know, DI out, uh, effects loops, things like yeah. that. Currently, the way I've got it set up is I use it, uh, so the FET circuitry is always dialed in, so that's always on. Uh, just gives it that extra little bit of, a little bit of body. So that's without. Just a little, a little yeah. bit of extra presence there happening. Um, and then with the other switch, uh, it's a, just a, a more gnarly overdrive. That's so great. That, you know, if I pop that on, it just gets me fired. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's great, especially when it's paired with like the octave and the the envelope filter, which we'll get to in a minute. But it kind of gives it that. Uh... Oh, yeah, that does the thing, doesn't yeah. it? Um, what a great piece of kit, and you're Laney and Dorsey as well, you're using their, their amplifier yeah, yeah, as well, yeah, which uh, I'll, we'll, we'll have a look at in a sec. Yeah, 100%, I use the, the Laney Nexus series amps, which are great, this is the 115k, but I've also got the 410 for bigger gigs, which you can stack up and it's it's mega, it's a beast. Yeah. That's so cool, right, we'll have a look at a few more features on that amp in a second, let's go and look, envelope filters are quite a big deal, aren't they, for bass players, because, <laughs> you know, they, well, that, ours, you know, that one will get me fired even more so than using a gnarly overdrive. Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, that that one, this is purely a, an indulgence for me because I, I, growing up listening to the Chili Peppers and all this, I really enjoyed that kind of, you know, big slap. Uh, so it never comes out on a gig, but at home it makes appearances yeah, all the time. always on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this one is made by a company in Portland uh, in the US. Um, called Mr. Black Pedals. And for a long time, I was, I was looking for an envelope that wasn't kind of too quacky, because um, I've tried some before and they just seem like they're a bit out of control, whereas this one, um, it's quite tasteful, I think, in the way that it, especially for bass, because I've got it set so it doesn't, it doesn't really open up too much. It kind of gives a bit of... And then with the octave. So, that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a speaker blower. <laughs> yeah, for sure, especially when you get that through a big PA, for sure. And that's Mr. Black pedals, not coming across that brand at all. It's a cool looking pedal, isn't it? Yeah, and it, it, they're hilarious as well. Like, they, you should read their manuals. They are they really don't take themselves <laughs> too seriously. And they Fantastic. Do everything in good humor, and it's, um, I just love the design of it as well. It's just fun to look at. Absolutely. It's called the Fwonk Beta. What, what more could you want? Yeah, and the la the, I think the knobs are labeled Stroke, Fwonk, and Juice. So I had to look up what that means. <laughs> yeah, well, good <we'll> start. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, great, great pedal. Yeah, more, more, your, and more. If you're into your filters, yeah. Brilliant. Um, you've got an HX Stomp. 
I do have an HX Stomp, yeah, and again, one of my more recent purchases, not that you could tell because it's banged up already. Um, but yeah, that again, a great standalone unit if you're out on a small gig and you just pop it in your back, you know, your back. Yeah, because you've got, like, you got amp simulators, you've got like, everything, reverbs, delays, overdrives, you, you name it. There's yeah. envelope filters in there for that matter, yeah. isn't it? So. Um, for guitar and, and bass, yeah. worth mentioning. Um, specifically here, I've just got it on, I think I've got some extra compression happening there. I've got some parallel compression actually happening just to kind of, especially when things go through the envelope and the drives and the octaves, it can get a bit out of control. So they kind of just, yeah, yeah, tames, just it, to, yeah. tames it on the way out. Um, and then I've got some reverb, uh, what we got? Chorus, reverbs and delays. So I've got my chorus there. So again, you know, if you're going th for that kind of 80s bass sound, you can pair that with the octave. Uh, with the, sounds cool with the drives as well. I'm loving that kind of parallel sound that you've got going. So you can still hear the, the raw bass yeah. sound and it comes through, that's, that's great. Yeah, um, you so, did a really cool thing before as well with a, with a reverb that I was hearing you play around with as well, which sounded really cool. Yeah, so I've got um, I've got the chorus there, and then I've got a plate reverb with I think there's some delay on that on that preset as well. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's really funny. So again, it, it doesn't come out much, you know, but you never know, you know, if you're playing live and then the artist suddenly wants to do a little breakdown section, a little ambient section, it, well, it can just give it yeah. that extra bit of... Well, that's perfect for like, I, I'm working on some stuff at the moment, which is like pedal steel, the kind of mm. ambient kind of chill, as they call it these days, <laughs> stuff. And that kind of sound is, is just along the vein of what what I've, I've been kind of Yeah, going exactly. For. And it's, it's not probably what you'd normally, you know, use on a, on a bass rig, you know, but if you're doing solo stuff or if you, like you say, if you're creating loops or beats yeah. and things like that, and you can easily, it just inspires you to do things you wouldn't normally, you'd normally do on a bass. That's so cool. So, yeah, Beautiful if was, sound. Yeah, if I was to play that dry, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't sound as nice. No, for sure. And then we're kind of going to get into the meat and potatoes of how you run your signal as mm -hmm. well here, aren't we? So we've got, obviously, you've got the amp, the Laney, and we've got a DI, and you've got the Sans amp as well. Yeah, we do. So um, normally, if I'm playing live, for example, so I'll, I might run the parallel out from the Sans amp to, to the amp uh, so that it's getting the unaffected cab simulation signal. Um, again, it's different for every, for every situation. Sometimes I'll prefer to mic up the amp if, if there is the facility and the time and stuff to do that. Um, if it needs to be quick, then I'll just, I might dial in some of the amp sim uh, front of house and then- Yeah, take... and that's of course what a Sans amp does, isn't it? It's basically an, an amp simulator yeah. kind of in a Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it, it does a whole bunch of different things uh, specifically the way it is now, it just blends in about, I would say maybe 40%, sorry, other way around, so 60% DI signal and then about 40% of the um, of the cab sim. And it just, especially when using a P bass, so if I was to dial that back now and just have only the DI signal. You're kind of getting a lot of that, a lot of that mid-range, a lot of that kind yeah. of directness. Uh, whereas if I, I blend it in with the amp, you're getting a bit more kind of wooliness, a bit more air. And it makes it makes all the effects as well just sit a little bit more tame within within the frequency range. That's a whole load softer. That sounds sounds great. Yeah, and then um, yeah, and then from there I'm running into the radial J48 Active DI box. Um, which again, similar to the Keeley, is kind of an essential part of my recording chain when I'm using DI boxes because I just really like the sound 
of the uh, the components that they use because it just gives it that little bit more meat. Just good quality gear. Yeah. And traditionally, when you're recording, you send a, a direct tone free of effects and, and a kind of... Yeah, that's correct. So uh, just the one very clean DI signal, just the, basically the sound of the bass and maybe a little tiny bit of compression and a DI box. Yeah. Um, and then a whole other signal, which is the, the Laney or, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever amp yeah, the effect is happening uh, at that point. Uh, and it just, it gives the producers and the mix engineers just that little bit of choice to be able to blend because I think a lot of people do that anyway. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Tell us a bit about the amp that you're using, Jesse. You're using the Laney Nexus. This isn't something I've come across, to be honest. So it's, uh... Yeah, it's, I've been using this one for a while. It's uh, it's the uh, Laney Nexus SLS. Um, I believe this is the 500 watt version. They do make a bigger head as well, which I believe is a th thousand watts. Um, but this is really, really great. Um, it's It's got a tube in the preamp section here. Got all your standard, you know, high, low signal inputs for active bass, passive bass. It's actually also got um, some onboard effects here. So it's got um, it's got reverb, it's got some, some octave, it's got modulation. Uh, and my personal favorite is this tilt function here, which basically takes the EQ curve and either does that to it or that to it. So when I'm playing live and I've got in-ears, for example, and I've got the amp behind me and I just want to feel the bass, I tilt it so that it's just blowing that ah, much, much more okay. bass into it. So I don't really need to hear the high frequencies if I've got my, my in-ears yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, if it's mic'd up, then that's different. But if I just want to feel it, then I, I just use the tilt function. When I first got this amp, I just spent all day playing around with that function. I was like, wow, because it just, it just takes the bass, pushes it, and knocks the treble down. That's so cool. Bit. Uh, but yeah, that's paired with the matching 115 cab, which is great, super, super powerful. Um, and then I've got the 410 as well, and bigger gigs, I'll just rig them both up. Yeah. And it's really, really killer tone. And in terms of just like strings and picks and all that stuff, we've, we've talked about strings, haven't we? You're an Elixir in Dorsey for yep. the round wounds and mm -hmm. old labellas. Picks? Picks, I, I don't really have a preference, to be honest. It's whatever's in my pocket at that time. <laughs> cool. Tends to be fairly heavy. If, yeah, her, yeah, heavy gauge, I'd say like maybe like one one millimeter and up type yeah. thing. Otherwise, it, it gets a bit flimsy with the attack. Um, Dull up, I guess. Yeah. They seem to be making a lot of plays. Picks. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, the other thing that we don't talk about a lot on these, well, is, is monitoring. We touched on it briefly then, and you and I both endorse Cosmic Ears out of yeah. the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do a great thing. I absolutely love Cosmic Ears. Um, I use the 6EPs, which is the flagship yeah, model standard kind of uh, flat EQ curve, but it's six drivers, so it's really, really great yeah. and, and clear and, yeah. And we have one great. more little preamp on the board that's not actually being used today because you play upright bass as well, don't you? So Yeah, so when I'm on the upright, it goes into this uh, K&K &K sound bass master. Let's turn it this way so people can see it. It's a, it's a two-channel preamp. Uh, I believe this one's called the Rockabilly preamp, actually, because it's designed to blend your fingerboard mic, which sits under it sits under the fingerboard, picks up all like your high frequencies, the little clicks, because yeah. I, do, I do quite a bit of Rockabilly stuff as well. So it takes that signal and it blends it with um, the bridge pickup, which is a realist. It's called a realist pickup, and it kind of sits kind of glued to the body, uh, copper pickup. And that gives me kind of the low thump, and then... I really enjoy the option of how much I can dial in the high, yeah. the high frequency. Yeah, that's um, a, the K and K stuff's great. Yeah. In terms of your powering, your board with a Voodoo Lab mm -hmm. uh, power supply. Pedal Power Two. Yeah. Uh, Voodoo Lab. Again, great. Never had an issue with it. Yeah. We do also have a, a base Jesse's just not long got up here that you can see as well. It's this this little Mustang base. I'll show some kind of. B-roll shot to that, but that's a, a yeah. bit of a new acquisition, isn't it? A short scale. Yeah, go on. I'll bring. I'll bring it oh, forward. Cool. So this is such a cool bass, Jesse. This is a Fender Mustang. Yeah, this is a 1976 Fender Mustang. It's my most recent acquisition. Um, these were actually introduced as student model when they first came out. Um, so obviously they have their shorter scale, their 30 inch scale, uh, which makes for 
a much more comfortable playing experience if you're just starting out or if you got relatively small hands yeah. for a bass player like myself. Yeah, so the pickup configuration is similar to the P-Bass, but it's not it's not a P standard P-Bass pickup, but it's a split coil too. And just really lovely to play. Nicely balanced, it's got flat wound strings on this one. So it's, again, it's got the kind of old school yeah. tone to it. And why, what would you use this for over say the P bass? What would, what would you pick this up for? Well, it's a slightly different tone. Um, again, it depends if, if the song feels like it's asking for that kind of tone or, or even, you know, if, if it's a, if it's a gig and I just fancy putting a bit less effort <laughs> yeah. into, into getting around Absolutely. the neck. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'll pull this sure. out. It's great as I keep, so I keep all my bases in the studio, but this one stays at home just so it can practice yeah. and you know it doesn't take up much space and it's uh got a really really lovely tone it's it's kind of it's not really a p bass it's not really a jazz bass it's kind of got no, its own it's got, got its, its own, own thing, thing going going. thanks so much for doing this jesse thank it's you. great thanks for having me like i said there's another full video all about bass that jesse's done with me which is really cool uh i'd love it if you like this video and got value out of it give it a like subscribe to the channel ring the bell icon you can go and check jesse out online at jesseegan.com yep. and he does remote bass sessions and all that good stuff you can go and check all that thanks so much my man thank Do you, you want for to, having uh, me yeah you're welcome do you want to play us out yeah why not come on let's do it <laughs>